Hello everyone and welcome to this look at LightWave with Core Technology. Today we're going to be checking out Viewport Preview Rendering, which allows you to view a high quality render of your scene as you work. We want to give you a sense of the speed and quality that this is going to bring to your workflow. So let's just check this scene out. I've got a basic uh, tanker here and a plane standing in for the ocean. And this uh, tanker mesh is the same one that we used in the feature release document that we sent out some time ago. And uh, it was provided to us by Antonis Skoukas. And it weighs in at about 450,000 polygons, so it's a pretty dense mesh. Now, uh, on the ocean, we've got a shader applied here. We're using uh, Fresnel Dielectric, and we're piping the reflection out to the reflection of the, of the uh, ocean surface there, just to give it that incidence angle fall off. If you look at the uh, attribute panel here for the uh, Fresnel, you can see it's a 1.33 index of refraction, which is water. And then uh, we've got a bit of a 3D bump map here that is just simulating the you know breakup from the waves so I'm gonna go ahead and you know give you a look at how fast it is when you're moving around here how quickly it gets back to a final quality so you're you're never having to guess at uh, what your lighting solution is gonna look like in your model you can see it and what may not be obvious here is that global illumination has actually been activated this entire time so you can see the white polygon spilling out onto the decking there. If I look into my uh, configure panel here, you can see all my settings for uh, gamma and for ray trace reflections, shadows, refractions, etc. It's got a backdrop color. The radiosity solution does support a backdrop color and you can see it's spilling the blue into the scene there. And here's my radiosity settings. So I've got uh, Monte Carlo radiosity on. I am using interpolation. You have the option to not use interpolation and go for a full Monte Carlo solution. And will you see some improvement in quality? Probably. But you've got to weigh that against the time. And uh, frankly, the interpolated mode is pretty darn good. And so I tend to stick with that too. So, you know, it's always a balancing act, but sometimes it's good to cheat. And so I'm going to turn that back on. And uh, I can even turn my maximum bounces up to three here. And, you know, start to see all those... Uh, bounces down there in those tight areas. Um, you know, just like Lightwave, you've got complete control over all your uh, all your radiosity settings there. I'm going to turn that back down to one for the purposes of this demo. So you, uh, you get a feel now for how fast this is, just moving around and uh, getting set up there and just let it resolve for a second. And, you know, you can see, you can you can work in this mode, you can model in this mode, but as impressive as all this is with a ship, you know, it's just one ship. But how much more impressive would it be if there was a whole fleet of ships? Right? So, conveniently, over here in the Layers panel, I have a bunch of instances that I can activate. Boom. There you go. Now we got eight ships. And you can see that, you know, even though I've got that much more geometry, this is going to be about... 3.6 million polys there, it still resolves really fast. And this is still having the uh, radiosity on. And they're reflecting and shadowing each other. And, uh, and there are instances so that if I go back and I change, make a change to the original object here, that's going to propagate down throughout the whole thing. So I'm actually going to do that right now. And I'm going to pick my original object and you can see that the pre-selection highlighting is actually working on top of VPR. Now the uh, selection doesn't quite work there yet. That's going to come in a later build. But for now, I'm going to select a line of polys here. Even though I won't be able to see it, I'm going to do a loop select. And now I can't see it, but I know that loop select is there. I'm going to actually expand the selection one. So it's going to select the polygon loop on top and on bottom of that. And now what I want to do is assign that a new material. So I'm going to go over here to my asset panel and make a new material and just call it dark metal. And I'm just going to assign it to that surface by dragging and dropping in the selection that I've got. Boom. Got that new surface assigned, new material. So I'm going to uh, pop back out of my quad view here and go over into my connection or you can see the selection that's happened in OpenGL over here. Um, still has selected. I, I knew it was there the whole time. 
So in order to edit my material in the connection editor here, I'm just going to drag this over. And I've got my basic uh, light wave shader. And I'm going to use the same Fresnel dielectric to give a little bit of an incidence angle reflection onto the metal. So I'm going to my shading system here, generators, Fresnel dielectric. Move that over. I'm going to pipe that to reflection. And then go over here and just set that to, say, 1.5. Something so just to give a little bit of reflection. And then I want to just look at the uh, the overall surface and uh, set that down to, like, say, to very dark paint. You can see updating in real time there. Let's maximize that. Um, low diffuse, give it some spec. Glossiness is 0.4 is pretty good there. So you can see that, you know, every time I make a change there, it's updating. And it's updating all of the clones because they're real instances. So that is going to be a very powerful thing to have in your arsenal. Give it a, a, a wider view there. And um, I think that should give you some idea of the speed and power that VPR is going to bring to your workflow.